Looking back, my story started about six years ago, just weeks into the relationship. I believed he constantly wanted to be with me because he loved my company. In reality, he was just always checking my phone. I was banned from social media sites. He believed this was a clear sign I was going to cheat on him. And his declarations of love were often coupled with threatening statements. Quite often he told me how much he loved me and couldn't live without me, but would then tell me what he'd do if I ever left or was unfaithful. We'd only been together for about three months when I fell pregnant with our first child. His response was to order me to choose between him and the baby, and when I told him I'd choose the baby if I had to, he threatened to commit suicide. He told me he was frightened because of past experiences, and I went from feeling really defensive to guilty. Pregnancy continued and, be and became a way of to control me. If I planned to do something he didn't want me to, it accused me of not caring about him or the baby. So I ended up doing as he said in order to prove I was just going to be a good mother. I quickly found myself isolated from all of my close friends. Because I'd moved in with him and was pregnant, many assumed I was simply busy with family life. Eventually they all gave up because I never responded. He had convinced me that they were, they were a bad influence and they were out to destroy our relationship through being jealous. By the time we got married, I virtually had no friends and only one was allowed to be present at the wedding. When it came to my family, he took a very different approach. He built up a really close relationship with my parents, controlling them and confiding in them about his troubled childhood and his adoration for me and our little family. By the time I had built up the courage to speak out to them, he had manipulated the situation, claiming that he was concerned for my mental health and that I was imagining things that weren't happening. He even managed tears to paint his picture of the concerned husband. Needless to say, my parents were con absolutely convinced. Their worries weren't about any domestic abuse, but for my mental health. His controlling behaviour and threats escalated after the birth of our second child, and I found myself really unhappy and isolated, caring for two very young children. I began to question whilst, why I wasn't allowed to socialise or spend time with anyone other than him, and the result of my questioning was just further regression. Over time, I started to realise that there were a lot of rules in our relationship that I had to follow to avoid arguments and guilt trips, threats or punishment, and I began to compare our relationship to others. I realised that our relationship wasn't perfectly normal, as he so often told me it was. The turning point for me occurred during one of his typical outbursts. He was shouting and screaming at me in my face, and I told him that he just had to leave the house. He got louder and more threatening. As I sat on the arm of the sofa crying, my three-year-old daughter climbed up next to me and wiped the tears from my face. As I picked her up, it suddenly dawned on me that I wasn't the only victim here, and I needed to get out for my children, if nothing else. Although I ended the relationship, the abusive behaviour continued and it became directed at children. On contact days, he would question them about their home life, criticise and play mind games, very similar to those he played with me. I'd always believed it was in the best interest to have a relationship with their father, but as their moods changed and low self-esteem and anxiety was noticed by school teachers and family, I realised that this contact was really becoming detrimental to their well-being. I stopped him having access to them pending court proceedings. The response to me, removing this final element of control, was to remind me that I once feared him. Over the following weeks, my car tyres were slashed, the paintwork on my car scratched, the wing mirrors kicked in. Dog mess was posted through the letterbox, and on two occasions, men I did not know came to my house, demanding to be let in. I reported the incident to the police and gave them the history of our relationship. It was them who referred me into Trident Reach a support organisation, and a counsellor was allocated and contacted me almost immediately to arrange a visit. Through this support, I now have the strength and self-confidence to raise the alarm and seek the help I need to get through the challenges I've yet to face. I've also gained the confidence to speak up about this kind of domestic abuse that I've experienced. I'm reassured that it's okay to say enough is enough and that seeking support isn't a sign of weakness.